As you may or may not have noticed, it's been a pretty heavy week. Hell, it might even have been a pretty heavy few months depending on where you are in the world. In light of these trying times, I've done my best to pick a more light-hearted topic for the latest video. If nothing else but to give you all some much needed distraction for a few minutes. I've decided to answer a question some of you may have asked, but probably not. How related is everyone? Let's start by asking how related you and me are. If you're from the UK or have British ancestry, there's a decent chance that we are distantly related. You might even be a third or fourth cousin of mine, who knows. However, what if we expand this criteria to people from different countries, and the closest block of countries to me happens to be Europe? Even if you are from the UK, you are still geographically part of Europe, despite Mr Farage's best efforts. This also means you are genetically related as well. Whether you're Irish, French, Italian, Polish, or even a Finn, you are likely to have many common ancestors with each other from the last thousand years. Even if you live on the opposite end of Europe to each other, you will still share millions of common genealogical ancestors over the last thousand years. This also means that if you're European, you are related to Charlemagne in some way or the other. Charlemagne was quite famously a rather fertile man, having 18 children amongst a number of wives, meaning you could be related to any of his offspring. Who knows, you could be distantly related to Charles the Younger, Pippin, King of Italy, Louis, King of Aquitaine, or even Hugh. But you may ask, what about if I'm not from Europe? What if you are one of my many, many Asian viewers? Well, to answer this question, we need to find the most recent common ancestor of all humans. Luckily for me, people far smarter and more qualified have already asked and answered this question. A study compiled in 2004 used mathematical modelling to take numerous factors such as population dynamics into account and produce who the last common ancestor was. Because of how random human population movement is, the last common ancestor's exact date isn't precisely known. However, what we do know is that the most recent common ancestor for the world's current population lived in the relatively recent past, most likely within the last few thousand years. It is possible that the last common ancestor of everyone on Earth lived as early as 300 BCE and lived somewhere in East Asia that had access to the populations of the Americas as well as Australia. Well, now we know that we are all related to some bloke kicking about in Siberia a few thousand years ago, but what if we take it a step further? The next logical step in my mind is to include our fluffy and not so fluffy pals, the mammals. As you may know, humans are mammals, but so are some other funky looking animals like whales, lemurs and monotremes. How far back do we have to go in order to find the ancestor of all mammals currently living on Earth? The answer? Approximately 210 million years ago in the late Triassic. And here they are. This little rat looking fella is called Morganucodon and it's probably what connects you to all other living mammals. This little guy was only about 10 centimeters long but had many traits common to all mammals today. They were probably endotherms like us and had similar jaw joints and only had two sets of teeth. Through the wonder of natural selection and evolution, this 210 million year old shrew boy gave rise to the largest animal ever to live along with arguably the most successful species in the history of planet Earth. But I'm not stopping there. Let's look even further back along our taxonomical ancestry until we reach the next major divide, the evolutionary step into bilateral symmetry. Bilateral symmetry separates us from other organisms like sponges and jellyfish and allows us to organise our organs more effectively for key processes such as movement and digestion. Simply, it allows us to move and digest better and gives us two holes, one at the anterior and the other at the posterior. If you've looked at the news recently, you'll have seen a few articles about this guy, Icaria warutia. This worm creature is quite possibly the earliest ancestor of all bilateral life. Icaria was wiggling around about 550 million years ago, and while only the size of a grain of rice, the fossils of this creature clearly show a distinct head and tail, making it a bilateral and confirming what evolutionary biologists have thought for years, but just didn't have the fossil evidence to prove. Here would be a good place to stop, a 550 million year old worm connected to most life on Earth. But what about all life? What connects the archaea kilometers down in the Earth's crust, mushrooms that span the entire area of forests, and colossal squid deep in the Arctic Ocean? The answer is Luca, the last universal common ancestor. Depending on who you ask, Luca is anywhere between 3.5 to 4.5 billion years old so several orders of magnitude older than the Australian worm previously talked about. 
While it is almost impossible that we will find a fossil of Luca, comparing the genomes of modern organisms can show us what characteristics Luca will have had. Luca was most likely a single-celled organism, not unlike modern bacteria, but existed before bacteria divided from eukaryotes like ourselves and archaea. According to this study, Luca was probably swimming around in hydrothermal vents billions of years ago in the early oceans, eating the chemical soup that's found in this habitat. And while it isn't very impressive, there is something weirdly comforting about the fact that you can trace all life on Earth back to a microscopic cell at the bottom of the ocean billions of years ago. Well there we have it folks, a somewhat comprehensive guide to how related we are to everything alive on this planet. I know this video isn't quite as comprehensive and fact driven as my last video, but I hope it gave you a few minutes of distraction from the madness going on at the moment. And I hope it reminds you that we're all in this together, no matter where you're from. If you like this video, check out the other ones on screen for a few more minutes of distraction, and maybe subscribe for more wacky videos. God knows I've got the time to make them at the moment. And on that note, I'll see you guys in the next video.